<clears throat> okay, today uh, what we're going to be learning about is probability, uh, which you probably have done before. So when we're talking about theoretical probability, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, take the number of favorable outcomes, which is this, that up at the top. Favorable outcomes is what we want to happen, and then we're going to divide it by the total number of outcomes. And so with the first example, what's the probability of rolling in is what we want to uh, even number. That's what we want to happen. That's our favorable outcome on a six-sided dice. So when we do this, again, uh, I'm going to put my favorable outcomes on the top, my total number of outcomes on the bottom. So with my favorable, uh, an even number, so that would be two, four, or six. On the bottom, the total number of outcomes are the numbers one through six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I have three outcomes on the top, three possible outcomes on the top. Those are my favorable outcomes, and the total is six on the bottom. And so this would be one half. Or if you wanted to write it as a, uh, you, you can divide one by two and get 0 0.5, which is 50%. And the second problem, it says in a bl blind taste test of 50 people, uh, given a drink, 10 Dr. Peppers, 15 Pepsis, 5 Cokes, and 20 Big K Colas. What's the probability of getting a Dr. Pepper? So again, my favorable outcome is getting a Dr. Pepper. And then the total number of outcomes, again, we'll be adding together all those possible drinks. So we've got 25 and 25, so we've got 50 total, total pops all in there. And so probability of getting a Dr. Pepper, there's 10 Dr. Peppers, over 50 total drinks, so the probability is, um, I can reduce that fraction down to one-fifth, which would also give me 0.2, which would be 20%. So pretty much any of these three answers would be acceptable. It's the probability of uh, spinning a number that is three or less on this spinner. So again, favorable, what I want to happen over total. So if I want to get a three or less, I could get a three, a two, or a one. And then the number of possibilities, I've got you know, one through eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I've got three um, favorable outcomes, three, two, or one. Then I've got eight totals. And so I do three divided by eight. Yeah, I could leave it as three over eight, or that would give me 0 0.375, which would be 37 and a half percent. So this is what we're getting into is something that's a little bit different. So right here for these first uh, these first two kind of rows of problems right here, all I want to do is just figure out the total number of outcomes. And these are when I'm flipping or, or, or spinning, you know, multiple things. So for the first one here, uh, what's the total number of outcomes flipping two coins? Um, so what I can do is, uh, you know, with two coins, I, I could just kind of list them out. I could go, I've got heads. Two heads, I've got a head and a tail. I've got a tail and a head, and I've got two tails. So I've got four different uh, total possibilities of, of flipping coins. And we're cons or the way that we do this is that um, the order kind of matters. So flipping a head first and then a tail is different than flipping a tail first and then a head. So um, another way that we can do this is... Um, I can kind of make uh, make a little like kind of box that represents the two coins. So this is my first coin, and this is my second coin. And so when I flip this first coin here, um, the total number of possibilities that can happen are there's two possibilities. With the first coin, I could either get a head or a tail. With the second coin, when I flip that, 
Again, the only you know, the two different possibilities are I could get a head or a tail. And so what I can do is using kind of this way of thinking about it is I can actually just uh, put in the number of possibilities of the first case, which was my first coin, and my second case, which is my second coin, and multiply them together. So 2 times 2 would give me 4 possibilities, which is what I got up here when I actually listed it out. The nice thing about being able to do it this way with, uh, you know, with these boxes is that when I have multiple, like when I'm rolling dice and stuff like that, I don't have to necessarily um, list out every single possibility. And so when I come over here, so if I have three coins, again, if I'm flipping three coins, I want to figure out the total number of possibilities. Instead of listing out all the different ways, I can put kind of three boxes. My first coin, my second coin, and my third coin. With my first coin, there's two possibilities, either a head or a tail. With my second coin, there's two possibilities, head or tail. Third coin, there's, po there's uh, you know, two possibilities, head or a tail. And so I can multiply those all together, and that would give me eight total possibilities. And so when I come down here, again, uh, so I've got three different uh, problems here. So if I'm rolling two dice, I want to figure out the number of possibilities. So again, I can go ahead and put my two boxes down. So I've got my first dice and my or my first die and my second die. A uh, regular dice just has six possibilities, and so I have six possibilities with my first dice, and then six possibilities with my second dice. And so I can multiply those by each other. And I can get, there's 36 different possibilities when I'm rolling a dice. So 30 different, six different possibilities when I'm rolling two, two dice. With the uh, second one, with three dice, again, same thing. I can go ahead and make it one, two, and three. You know, it's still six-sided dice, so one, first dice second dice, third dice, and I can multiply them all together and get 216. And then with this last one over here on the right hand side, so I have uh, two eight-sided dice. So again, I have two possibilities. Here's my first dice and my second dice. So eight-sided dice and eight-sided dice. So that would give me 64 different possibilities of rolling those two dice. And so all of this kind of comes down to, so in this bottom problem, I want to figure out what's the probability of rolling a 7 with two dice. And so, again, uh, favorable over total. My favorable is I want to roll a 7. So the different ways that I can roll a 7 with 2, and the, again, these are 6-sided dice, um, is I could roll a, uh, let's see, I could roll a 1 plus a 6, a 2 and a 5, a 3 and a 4. And again, order doesn't matter, so then, uh, like this is my first dice and second dice, first dice and second dice, first dice and second dice. So I could also roll a 4 first and then a 3. I could roll a 5 first and then a 2. And then I could roll a 1 first and then a 6. So I've got, when I do this, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different possibilities. So I've got 6 different ways to roll, uh, to roll a 7 with 2 dice. And the total, again, the total number of possibilities of rolling uh, 2 dice first dice, second dice, so I've got six uh, possibilities with the first dice and six with the second, so I get 36 total possibilities. So I can reduce this down to, again, one over six. When I divide that, I get 0 0.167 or as a percent, that would be 16.7%.